Hi, and welcome to this Spectro Scientific webinar. Okay, right now I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Ken Caldwell. Ken is Spectro Scientific's product manager for industrial solutions. He is a graduate of Carnegie Mellon University with a Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering. Ken has worked as an engineer and has held a variety of technical product marketing, product management roles for organizations providing products and services for applications and markets including analytical instrumentation, industrial processing, and semiconductor manufacturing. So Ken, welcome to today's event. And with that, I'd like to pass things along to you to get everything started. So Ken, go right ahead. Welcome everyone to the Spectro Scientific Webinar real-time engine oil analysis for mission-critical applications using the new Minilab EL series analyzer. During this webinar, we'll cover the use of oil analysis as a non-destructive inspection tool and the importance of it in an overall inspection program, the types of information and the oil parameters that can be measured and trended for engine oil analysis, the instrumentation techniques used to measure those parameters, and the integration of the instrumentation into the Spectro Scientific Minilab EL series. Spectro Scientific has focused exclusively on instrumentation to monitor machinery and engine lubricating oil for over 30 years. Over the years, we've continuously expanded our capabilities and product offer for lubrication system monitoring. Founded in 1983, Spectro is headquartered in Chelmsford, Massachusetts in the United States. As a sole source supplier to United States military joint oil analysis program, we provide instrumentation that determines whether equipment is ready for mission critical applications. As the largest turnkey oil analysis solution provider in the industry, we are also the leader in developing of testing standards for the industry, such as ASTM standard methods for testing in-service lubricating oils. In ISO 9001 organization, we are committed to quality in the products we deliver. Wear metal analysis for oil was first done over 70 years ago for a locomotive engine. It's proven to be the most reliable and comprehensive non-destructive inspection tool for engine analysis. Oil analysis provides comprehensive view of engine wear and tear, oil contamination from both solid and liquid sources, and engine oil degradation. Engine oil analysis has become a widely adopted practice in many industries. There are various techniques for non-destructive testing and non-destructive inspection, including ultrasonic, vibration, endoscopy, and oil analysis. Oil analysis fills a unique role in that it's used over the entire engine life cycle. For initial engine development work, wear metals are analyzed to monitor the progression of engine wear, and the proposed lubricant for the engine is analyzed for lubricant condition breakdown. In the production of high performance engines, wear metal analysis is used as part of the final quality control procedure. And finally, for in-service engines, oil analysis is used to prevent premature failures and to minimize oil and maintenance cost in a condition-based maintenance strategy. One of the challenges in a traditional oil analysis process is the sequence of events and the time needed to obtain a final report. Once the sample is drawn, paperwork to ship a sample off-site is usually required and arrangements made then for the sample to be picked up and delivered to a commercial laboratory. Once the sample is received by the lab, it is scheduled for analysis. The sample is run by an operator. The results are provided to an oil analyst who reviews the results, makes comments, and authorizes the release of the final report. Only when this report is received do you have a clear go, no go on the condition of the oil. This process can take two days to three weeks from the time a sample is done. 
it's difficult to utilize oil analysis for non-destructive inspection due to these long lead times associated with traditional oil analysis lab services. Real-time oil analysis for diagnostics is already in use. For Formula One engines, which consist of several hundred moving parts separated by a thin film of oil, with an oil circulating time of just 15 seconds to make a complete cycle through the engine, elemental wear metal analysis is critical for trackside report. In the military, oil sampling with elemental analysis is a daily routine done both before flight and after flight for mission critical aircraft. The challenge is that currently there is no complete system that provides a full engine oil analysis and report in just a few minutes. Engine oil analysis parameters can be grouped into three categories. The first is lubricant contamination, whether due to particulate or from liquids. The second is the lubricant condition, which addresses the viscosity and the chemical properties of the lubricant itself. And finally, the all-important machine condition where the wear particles give an indication both of normal machine wear as well as abnormal wear. Based upon this information, decisions can be made such as maintenance of changing a filter or changing the oil or possibly warranting an engine teardown for detailed inspection. Oil analysis is a quick and reliable non-destructive inspection technique for engine diagnostics and analysis. Oil analysis for engines is quite complex. The whole category of engine wear, we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, contamination of the oil is from various sources. There can be fuel dilution where the diesel fuel leaks into the oil compartment, coolant links, water, soot, a byproduct of incomplete combustion, and sand and dirt are particulate contaminants. Oil condition is reflected primarily by viscosity and the total base number. These two parameters are by far the most important oil conditions, but also the oxidation, sulfation, and nitration characteristics of the oil and the status of the additive level. Determining engine wear must look at several possible sources. Abnormal engine wear is caused by corrosion, abrasion, adhesion, and metal fatigue. Corrosion is accelerated due to moisture in the oil, or if the oil is already severely degraded. Abrasion is a result of fine particulates of sand and dirt circulating through the oil lubricant system and forming what's called third-party abrasion with the wetted surfaces that are supposed to be lubricant. Adhesive wear is caused by oil starvation or oil degradation, and metal fatigue can be due to high vibration levels or engine overload. Oil contamination is quite harmful for engines. Dirt enters the engine through filters or breathers. Glycol contamination from leakage of coolant in the lubricating oil system, the presence of water and oil. Soot uh, is considered a form of contamination uh, and it's formed from the incomplete combustion of the fuel. Dilution of the oil due to fuel ingestion into the oil system. Contamination by other fluids such as hydraulic fluid contamination of the oil. Oil degrades due to oxidation, excessive temperature or load, additive depletion, as well as contamination. The key parameters of oil condition include the viscosity. For engines, it's usually referenced as the viscosity at 100 degrees centigrade. The total base number, which characterizes the alkalinity of the oil in terms of how much acid is needed to neutralize the sample and oxidation, nitration, and sulfation. Oxidation occurs in the presence of air and heat. Atmospheric oxygen will react with the hydrocarbons in the engine oil to form weak acids. This is inevitable 
It's a process that must be monitored and to help protect the lubricant, antioxidant additives are included in almost all formulations. Oxidation rate will vary greatly with temperature as well as by the presence of other contaminants in the lubricant. So keeping the oil clean and dry is the best way to manage oxidation. Nitration is a concern in engine oils. Heat can cause the atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen to react forming nitrous oxides. These can cause premature thickening of the engine oil. Common causes of nitration include inefficient exhaust of the combustion products, uh, improper air to fuel ratios, and low operating temperatures. Finally, sulfation is caused by the reaction between oxygen, heat, water, and sulfur from the diesel fuel forming sulfur-based acids. Sulfation occurs when these acids react with either the additives in the oil or the base stock of the lubricant itself. And sulfation can cause increased viscosity and the formation of sludge and sedimentation. Added depletion, in particular the additive ZDDP, is monitored as well to track the progression of the degradation of oil condition. A variety of oil analysis techniques are used to monitor these many parameters. The most common is elemental analysis with an optical emission spectrometer. This gives information on the wear metals present in the oil, the status of the additives, as well as contamination sources in the oil. Elemental analysis measures both dissolved and fine particles, less than 10 microns in size, in parts per million levels. Total ferrous is measured as an indication of the total magnetic content, mostly iron, but also elements such as cobalt and nickel are magnetic. And total ferrous measurement measures the total content regardless of the size of the particle itself. Kinematic viscosity measures the oil viscosity and can be measured either at 40 centigrade or at 100 centigrade. And infrared spectroscopy is used for oil condition and contamination including the above mentioned oxidation, nitration, sulfation, total base number, and total acid number for natural gas engines is also given. Finally, it's used for water, the presence of glycol, soot, and foreign fluids. Fuel dilution measures the percentage of fuel dilution caused by the ingress of fuel into the engine oil. Setting up an on-site oil laboratory can be expensive. In addition to the capital costs of the lab instrumentation, there can be hidden costs that make setting up a full-scale lab prohibitive. Staffing and training must be addressed. Some laboratory instrumentation requires highly skilled operators to run samples and interpret the results. Environmental considerations must be addressed. Most instrumentation use hazardous materials such as solvents for cleaning or chemicals for titration. If these are used, then proper storage, handling, and disposal after use must be addressed. Impacts to the overall facility in terms of the IT group. Multiple PCs to operate the various instruments can be required in a typical full lab setup. And finally, the simple logistics of handling the sampling, testing, and reporting. These can all cause excessive delays in obtaining results from a full-scale oil laboratory. There are several reasons why the Minilab EL series is the ideal tool for non-destructive inspection. The high performance of the instrument is reflected in the fact that all instrumentation is fully ASTM compliant. There's a test method for each piece of instrumentation. This instrumentation is comprehensive, providing up to 36 parameters on oil condition, contamination, and wear. It's convenient and easy to operate. Sample processing is fast, less than five minutes to run all of these tests. No sample preparation is required, and no special facility requirement beyond Line power. Environmentally friendly, 
only four milliliters of oil is used for analysis, which results in lower waste, and no solvent or hazardous chemicals are required. Finally, the Minilab EL series is expandable. Options include an extended metals program, which adds an additional seven wear elements for a total of 31 elements, as well as a coolant analysis and a fuel analysis calibration. Let's take a look at these individual techniques for a moment. Elemental analysis, the standard kit supplies 24 elements. Other factory installed calibrations are available. It's ASTM compliant with its own test method. It requires less than two milliliters of oil and less than 90 seconds to analyze all elements. No special sample preparation or solvents or chemicals or specialized gases are required to run the system. Operation is straightforward. An electrode is sharpened, inserted along with a rotating disc into the instrument. Sample is pipetted into a cup, approximately two milliliters, and the cap loaded into the instrument for test. Infrared analysis reveals oil condition and liquid contamination in less than one minute. Parameters reported include total base number, oxidation, nitration, sulfation for engine oil, and total acid number also for natural gas engines and machinery oils, as well as water, glycol, and soot. The instrument is ASTM compliant and requires a simple drop of oil for operating. It's inserted into the test cell. The instrument started, generates an infrared spectrum compares it to its built-in reference library for clean oils, and produces an output of fluid properties. Viscosity is measured on a kinematic viscositor. Plates are heated to 40 degrees C to provide a true kinematic viscosity reading. The 100 C viscosity value is extrapolated uh, with the viscosity index calculation. The instrument is compliant with an ASTM method. Only 60 microliters of oil are required and no solvents. And analysis time ranges from a few seconds to a lightweight oil to up to five minutes for a 680 centistoke oil. Test time is viscosity dependent. Simply draw a sample in the pipette and insert it into the instrument to start the analysis. Fuel dilution can be measured directly on an instrument. Some people use the indirect measurement of the viscosity to trend fuel dilution as a rough indication of that. This fuel dilution meter reports fuel dilution in the range of 0.2% to 15% and uses less than a half milliliter of oil in a one minute test time. A drop of oil is simply placed on the felt at the bottom of the sample cup. It's covered and inserted in the instrument to start the analysis. Total ferrous wear provides an indication of all magnetic material, regardless of the size of the particle. It can detect up to 10,000 parts per million, 1% of total ferrous wear in oil. It measures all particle sizes. It has an ASTM standard associated with it. It uses one and a half milliliters of oil in a 30 second test time. Simply pour the sample into the vial insert it into the instrument and push start. And again, no sample preparation or solvents are needed. The Minilab EL system is controlled by the Minilab software suite. It's a web browser-based system which can be hosted or installed on a local server. It consists of the Minilab device console and a laboratory information management or LIM system. On the Minilab device console, you simply enter your sample or acid ID, operate the instruments, it acquires the data, and automatically transfers it to the laboratory information management system. The LIMS module is hosted or installed on a local server. It's web browser based with a separate lab and client portal interface. It helps to manage assets, the oil reference library, limits and alarms, and reports. Standardized reports are available, which show 
individual sample results as well as trend results with multiple parameter plots. The Mila BL series is an ideal tool for non-destructive testing and non-destructive inspection for engine development, production test and QC, and condition-based maintenance for railway, aerospace, racing, and all engine testing that requires high performance. In summary, the Spectroscientific Mini Lab EL Series is an ideal solution for high performance engine oil analysis. You have comprehensive lab quality reports with over 36 parameters. All instrumentation is ASTM compliant. NIST traceable validation standards are provided for all instrumentation. And the results are rapid, less than five minutes and less than five milliliters of oil sample. There are no hidden costs of operating the Minilab, no special solvents or chemicals, and no special IT or facility requirements. The entire system is operated from a single PC. I'd like to thank you for your participation in this Spectro Scientific webinar, and we have time for some questions. Thank you for your presentation, Ken. And now let's get to the Q&A portion of the webinar. My name is Sandy Schiller. I am Director of Marketing here at Spectro, and I will be reading the questions as they come in. I can see we already have a few questions in the queue, so let's begin. And our first question is, if I take a sample from an engine and test immediately after, do I need to shake the sample? That's a great question. Well, the wear metal analysis is the only measurement that's sensitive to the particle distribution in the oil sample. So if it's a fresh sample, uh, for example, one that's been pulled within 30 minutes from an operating engine, it's not necessary to, to shake the sample because the wear metals are already uniformly distributed from circulating in the oil stream. Thank you. Uh, next question. When does the iron reading between total ferrous wear and elemental analysis differ the most? Well, um, total ferrous measurement and the elemental measurement of ferrous uh, both measure the dissolved ferrous and small particulates equally well. However, the spectrometer, the elemental analysis, has an upper limit of roughly 10 microns in terms of particle size in order to ensure an accurate measurement. That's why total ferrous measures the ferrous content of all size particulate, including uh, the, the important large ferrous particles, which are indicative of abnormal engine wear. Okay, next question. Which model is the right model for me? Should I choose the 123 or the 143? Well, I'm per personally particular partial to the uh, Minilab 143 because it provides two additional parameters. Total ferrous, again, it will measure abnormal wear, large abnormal wear particles um, in addition, and also it provides a very specific measurement of fuel dilution with a range up to 15% fuel dilution. A lot of people uh, for trending will use changes in viscosity as an indirect measurement of fuel dilution, but the 143 gives you a specific fuel dilution measurement. Thank you. Next question. We estimate fuel dilution by trending the viscosity. Do I need the fuel dilution meter? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I touched on this previously, but um, assessment of fuel dilution by changes in viscosity is a bit problematic. Um, viscosity can change because of lubricant breakdown and not just because of fuel dilution or fuel in leakage. So a, a specific measurement of fuel dilution is, is recommended. Okay. Um, I have engine oil analysis requirements from the engine OEM. Does the Minilab EL measure these parameters? Yes. I mean, a typical OEM engine will specify viscosity. Uh, water measurement levels, soot, total base number, as well as 
parameters such as the elemental contaminants, sodium, silicone, potassium, etc. And of course, while an engine OEM will not specify limits for wear metals, it's very important to trend them to understand the condition of the engine itself. Okay, next question. What is the advantage of running a full mini lab? Don't I get the same results with individual instruments? Yes, um, it's a good question. I mean, all of the components, all the individual instrumentation that makes up the mini lab can be operated independently as a standalone instrument. You, you'll certainly obtain the same data from the measurements. But for when multiple instrumentation is required, such as for engine oil analysis, it can be really convenient to have both an integrated device console where you can operate all the instruments from a single computer screen, as well as the results are then stored into an integrated database. So for trending and report generation, examining cross-correlations between various parameters, that's where the integrated Minilab series really, really has an advantage. Next. What is the range of such measurements on the mini lab? I run a lot of very sooty samples. Well, you're, you're not alone in that. I mean, one of the, the bugaboos of engine oil analysis is soot concentration. The infrared spectrometer on the mini lab will measure soot concentrations up to 2%. Now, if a higher range is required, uh, we offer an optional soot meter, which has a range up to 15% soot. Okay. Next question, how much oil sample do I need? Not very much. Um, to run all five instruments, you need a total of five milliliters of oil. So it's a very, uh, very small amount of oil necessary for the mini lab. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I am also interested in engine coolant analysis. Can the mini lab run these samples as well? Um, yes, the, the parameters that are interested in coolant analysis are elemental parameters, and so there is additional calibrations uh, available on the spectrometer that's used in the mini lab. So we have an optional coolant program and calibration, and with these, it's, it's possible to detect lower limits of detection for the coolant than the standard calibration will provide. Okay. Uh, could you expand on how is the viscosity measured and how is it possible not to use solvents for cleaning? So the way the viscosity is measurement is there's two parallel plates with a microchannel in it. The plates are heated to 40 C, so we're measuring a true kinematic viscosity. And a single drop of oil, well, it's less than a drop, it's only 60 microliters which is we provide a positive displacement pipette, which precisely uh, drops 60 microliters into the scometer. And then um, kinematic viscosity, under the force of gravity, we time the, uh, the transit of the oils down the channel. And that's what correlates then directly to 40C. I will say also that you know, the viscosity measurement is extremely accurate, 3%. And if you're using and interested in trending V100, which most engine people do, there's simple use of the viscosity index, uh, which is in the oil database. It'll take the actual measured 40 degrees C kinematic viscosity measurement, apply the viscosity index, and report and store in the database an approximate V100 C. Okay, we have a question about um, the viscometer. Does it work with hydraulic? Fluid. Yes, absolutely. The viscometer will work with, uh, I'll use a very technical term here, any Newtonian fluid. So you can use oils, uh, you can certainly use hydraulics, et cetera, for it. Okay. Um, how many oil samples can be completed within one hour? Well, of course, you know, there's operator training, but basically once you run a, you know, you did a little bit of training on it. Um, you can run a sample, uh, all five measurements on the Minilab 143 in under five minutes. Okay. The Minilab EL series is five different pieces of equipment. It's a question. Well, it's five components, each with a dedicated, or I should say, specific instrumentation technology in it. 
but it's one system in that all the instruments are controlled by a, a single piece of software. You can create and send samples and make measurements. And of course, all the data is stored in a common database. So you have an integrated operation of all the instruments, and you have an integrated database for trending and reporting and conducting cross-correlation of parameters and that sort of thing. Okay. Does all of the separate test equipment in the Minilab EL tie into a single source for capturing results? And if so, can you provide an example of that? Um, sure, yes. Um, so all of the measurements are tied into a single source. Um, when you run testing, the results are displayed on the same panel from which you operate the instruments, so you can see right away what the information is. And then you can uh, open up. We have standardized reports in there, which show the sample results and print your report or store it or send it to email it to somebody uh, via PDF. There's automatic setup of emails. If you want to send emails after each test result to your manager or your, you know, your ally, you can do that. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions about calibration requirements. How does the equipment need to be calibrated? Okay. So for the, I'll take them one at a time. So for the viscometer, uh, we, there are a, NIST traceable viscosity standards we provide with the instruments. Pretty much the same fluid you would use to calibrate any kinematic viscometer, such, such as the laboratory would use. The infrared, the spectrometers, um, they generate a spectrum, so there is no calibration per se, but what we provide is a fluid which verifies that the hardware, you know, the emitters, the infrared emitters and the infrared detectors are actually capturing the light that's coming across, so we provide check fluid verification of those. There's a complete set of elemental standards. Standard spectrometer is provided with 24 elements, and we have a 12-24 element calibration fluid and also additional calibration fluids if you were to use one of the optional coolant programs, for example. Th those are all available. Fuel dilution, there are standards. We, we provide standards, uh, typically a 5% diesel and oil. Most people uh, tend to make their own fuel dilution standards to accommodate local uh, variations in the blends of the oil itself, but we do provide a, a traceable validation fluid for that. And finally, then for the ferrous check, we have uh, a NIST traceable ferrous validation standard, and so all validation fluids are supplied with the instrument. Thanks, Ken. Uh, another question around. Uh, can I have wear metal readings, uh, for example, copper, iron, aluminum, vanadium, et cetera? Yes, that's one of the primary purposes for the spectrometer. You know, you're, when you're doing engine oil analysis, it's important to track chemistry and contamination, but really where, where the money is, so to speak, is in the trending and measurement of those wear metals. Okay. We even have an extended where metal analysis program, which adds an additional seven, seven elements to that. Okay, can this, um, is this equipment uh, appropriate for field operations? It's really designed to be a tabletop. Um, so while some of the individual uh, components, for example, the viscometer and the infrared spectrometer and the ferrocheck, which is the small total ferrous meter, those are portable. In fact, they're battery operated. So uh, both the viscometer, the infrared, which will measure your water and TBN, and your total ferrous measurements, they're very well suited for, you know, putting it in the back of the truck and driving off someplace for field work. Okay. Um, we have a question around demonstration. Um, would you be able to provide a demonstration using all the, the components of the system together? Absolutely. I'm, I'm working on a video. I shot some footage on Friday, but I need to do some cutting and pasting and some voiceovers and things. But look for, in the near future, a uh, Minilab 143 operating uh, video on the Spectro YouTube channel. We'll also put it up on our website. Okay. We have a couple of questions that came in around pricing for the Minilab EL system. And what we'd like to say there is um, 
please contact or access the Spectra Scientific website and find your local representative who can provide you with pricing information. Okay. Um, does this equipment work with hydraulic fluids? Yes, it does work with hydraulic fluids, so you can do all of the tests we've, we've described. Additionally, what's also um, a bit of problem with hydraulic fluids is uh, contamination, particle count. So a lot of people are interested in doing particle count, get their ISO codes for their hydraulic fluids. To do that, you would need an additional piece of instrumentation, which is our laser net particle counter, uh, and that's a uh, uh, that's certainly available as an add-on option. Thank you. Um, another question, can you further describe the setup of the RDE spectrometer? I'm um, not sure I understand the question, but basically the spectrometer is a very easy to use device. Um, and you basically pipe it in about two milliliters into a black cap, put it in, insert the electrode in the disc, so the operating principle is simple. There's a 100 micron gap between uh, the disc and the, the carbon rod. Uh, and it's about a 10,000 volt delta across the two. And so what happens is that the disc is rotating. It kicks up a little bit of oil into that gap where it's, it's ionized, and so you get the spectrum uh, from the various elements coming off of that high voltage discharge. It's commonly referred to as arc spark in terms of the technology. Okay, uh, question. Um... I would just add that on the, there's questions on the individual instruments because, you know, this is a um, overall an integrated system overview. On the Spectro YouTube channel, as well as on our website, there are links to individual um, individual videos which detail not just the operation, which I kind of quickly went over today in the in the presentation, but also the underlying theory of operation and basic principles of the instrument. I encourage you to check check our website for some of those. Thanks, Ken. Um, Another question about a uh, comparison to another piece of spectro um, test equipment, the microlab. Uh, so the question specifically is about how the mini lab EL differs from the microlab analyzer. Well, the microlab is used and is our standard offer for fleets, for, for trending equipment in fleets. What we've done with this offer is we've targeted for very high performance engines, such as uh, engine development. We're really interested in baselining the performance of the instrument and you're know, still in the development phase. And I would say that the one specific differentiator would be for those applications where some high performance engines, they have very low parts per million detection limits uh, for some wear metals that that's what this offer is targeted for. The other aspect, which is the micro lab, is really set up for volume. In other words, uh, with the micro lab, you take your sample bottle, insert it into the sipper tube, and it draws the sample and does all these analyses uh, at once. So the, the very much an easy to use technician level, you know, cashiers at truck stops operate the micro lab, so it's really straightforward. Uh, for this, as you've seen, there's like five different little instruments. It's easy to train somebody to use that, um, but again, it is five separate tests. They can be done in five minutes, but you're a little bit more busy, right, um, to, to make the measurement. So it's really a uh, gear for that audience. Great, thank you. Do you have compar comparative analysis for results from the mini lab and standard laboratory results. Well, um, I can address that. The elemental spectroscopy is standard laboratory elemental. The the elemental analyzer we use is used in dozens and dozens of commercial labs for oil analysis. Um, so it is the same thing. Um, the fluid scan is a little different, and that it's a portable uh, diffraction graded spectrometer, whereas most laboratories would use an NFTIR. Um, all of the instruments we use are 
have an associated ASTM standard method associated with them. So they do have that level of traceability, and all of the validation fluids are, are NIST traceable. So you do, in fact, get lab quality results uh, with the MAYA BL series. Okay. Um, it looks like that was our last question. Um, so at this point, we're going to um, wrap the webinar right there. Um, and thank you very much to our presenter, Ken Caldwell. And thank you to all of our audience members for being part of the event. Take care, everyone, and we'll talk with you soon.